Hi, this is Miss McGovern, and this is a level 3 physics electricity video, the second video uh, about internal resistance, where I'm going to go a bit more into detail with internal resistance. So I'm going to start with another simulation, uh, graph the data from that and come up with a formula. And really what I want to show you is that um, in the first video of an internal resistance, we talked about what voltage was being um, lost, I guess, with the internal resistor. And I want to show that, that value is not the best uh, value to get, what we really want is the resistance of that internal resistor, little r that I've got on the diagram there. So here I have a simulation and um, looks more complicated than last time. There's a bulb and some resistors, you don't know what resistance they are. Um, there's a battery with internal resistance, it's not ideal, you don't know what the internal resistance is. It's an open circuit though, and so you measure what you measure at the start, the 9 volts, that's the EMF. Okay, that's the true voltage or the proper voltage or the open circuit voltage. You close a um, switch and then you get a new voltage, 6.92. Okay, so this happens because some of the voltage is being lost within the battery. Right, so we close another one and what happens? Oh, the voltage that you measure over the battery is different again. So that means it went from 6.92 down to 5 point something. Okay, so that voltage being lost in the internal resistor has changed again. I, I put another um, resistor in the circuit and that voltage changes again that I'm measuring over the battery. And finally, the last one, and again, I've got a different value. Okay, so I've got a current for each one of these. And so what I'm going to go through is I'm just going to go through and grab each of the voltages and currents. Um, so really quickly start again, the EMF open voltage was that down to 6.92 when one of them was in 0.69 amps. Um, down to 5.62 volts, 1.12 amps, down to 4.7 volts and 1.42 amps, and the last one connected gets me 4 volts and 1.64 amps. Okay, so here's my data, um, 0 amps, okay, open circuit, 9 volts, that's my EMF, and I've got all of these values here. So it would make sense to graph them, because when I've got a bunch of values, why not graph them and see what sort of pattern it makes? And you can see on this graph that the red dots there look to be a straight line. So I'm going to add a line of best fit, and it is. It's a straight line. So when I've got a straight line like that, I can get a formula out of it or an equation out of that. The first thing I do is find the slope. So slopes rise over run. Um, so you can see it starts off about 9 volts, and then after 1 amp, it's down to 6 volts, so it's dropped by 3. So the rise is negative 3 over 1, negative 3 volts per amp. Volts per amp is actually an ohm. So my slope is actually negative 3 ohms. The formula I can get out from this um, when you do straight line graphs is y equals mx plus c. I'm going to substitute y instead of my y, what's my y-axis, it's voltage. My m is my gradient, my x is my x-axis, which is current, and my c is where it cuts the y-axis, the y-intercept, which looks to be about 9 volts. So now I've got an equation, voltage equals negative 3 ohms times current plus 9 volts. I can simplify that down for, for or generalize, sorry, for any value. Instead of writing the negative 3 ohms, I can say, well, that is the internal resistance. That's what that value is. It doesn't change no matter what's put in the circuit. It's, it's what the um, internal resistance of my battery was in this case. The 9 volts I've generalized, it's the EMF. And the symbol, remember, for EMF is that funny E, epsilon. So now I've got a general formula that I can use um, for whatever I put in a circuit. Um, to help me work out what the internal resistance is. I can rearrange that and make the EMF the um, subject of the equation. And the reason I'm doing that is I can actually compare it to the formula that I had in my first video, which was EMF equals the voltage we measure plus the voltage that's lost internally. And what you'll actually see is everything lines up with the formula above it, except the last term. And what that tells you is that the internal voltage is just equal to the current times the internal resistance, V equals IR, which makes sense. Now the reason I've done this is because this formula is not given to you in the, in the formula sheet. So you kind of have to be able to remember it or, or know where it comes from. I find it easier to remember the last one, the, the true voltage, or the voltage formula, which in my head is kind of an energy formula. It tells me that the total energy is equal to the energy I measure plus whatever energy is lost. And if, as long as I can just substitute that last one, the internal voltage, for IR, then I'm good with every formula I need. So in summary, um, the internal voltage is not really a good measure all the time because it changes depending on what's in the circuit, right? I was um, getting a different value for whatever number of resistors I put in there. It's better to try and find the internal resistance, the la. 
Um, the way we do that is this formula here, EMF equals the voltage plus IR. But that's sometimes a little bit hard to remember. I find it easier to remember the, the true voltage equation, which is equivalent, um, but slightly different, which is the EMF, which is the voltage supplied, is equal to the voltage we measure, plus the voltage lost to internal resistance. As long as you remember that also V equals IR, you can substitute that last one and you've got the, um, the formulas you need.